So for the next presentation, I will be talking. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a practicing neurologist as well. And uh, what I'm going to talk about is the use of pharmacologic enhancements in, uh, in normal individuals. So these are people uh, that are not actually experiencing a disease. And to illustrate this point, I'm going to start out with the hypothetical patient. So I have my practice uh, over at the Hospital of the University of Pennsylvania. I see patients with various kinds of cognitive disorders. And this hypothetical patient who's middle-aged, uh, quite well-to-do, walks in. And he comes in because he has problems with his memory. And I talk to him for a while, and it becomes quite clear that the real reason for his memory problems is that he's very stressed. He's going through a divorce right now. Uh, and that he's so preoccupied by his internal emotional states that he loses track of things. Uh, and that what he, what he really has is some mild uh, symptoms of depression. And this is contributing to his memory problem. This seems fairly straightforward, so I give him an antidepressant, a serotonin, a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. He takes this, and after a while, he feels uh, quite, quite well, uh, and he's back to his uh, type A personality, doing very well in his profession. So he likes this. Uh, in, in the meantime, his daughter, who now is a freshman at Penn, turns out is not doing quite as well as uh, she had in high school. He gets concerned about this, wants me to see the daughter. Uh, the daughter is diagnosed by her high school uh, psychologist before she came to Penn as having attention deficit disorder. Uh, but now she's a young adult, so I see her. I prescribe uh, a stimulant, in this case Adderall. She takes it. She tends to do better uh, in her midterms. Uh, her dad is really thrilled at this now. And then he starts to think a little more expansively. He thinks that his son, who's a, uh, a runner, uh, but is a, he's a pretty good runner, but he's not a state-level runner. And he decides that if, he could, if his kid could only be a slightly better, maybe he'd get into a better school. So he comes to me and says, is there anything you can do? And I point out that there really is no hard data for medications that might help for such a condition. However, there was one study that showed uh, that mountain climbers, at, uh, actually at uh, Mount Everest, uh, were studied uh, in the condition in which they were given a medicine called uh, sildenafil, better known as Viagra, and that this actually improved their oxygen carrying capacity within their lungs. Uh, so there was a rationale to think this might help a long distance runner. I suggest trying this. The son is excited about this possibility. He takes the medication, ends up doing well, uh, and now the father is even more thrilled. Uh, he is now. Uh, going to vie for a contract uh, for his business, which is, being, uh, which is being offered by the royal family in Saudi Arabia. He comes up with the idea that maybe if he learned Arabic, this would give him an edge over other people competing for this, uh, this position. Uh, he wants to know if there's anything I can do to help him learn Arabic more quickly. And I point out that there is some data that amphetamines improve neural plasticity that if he took amphetamines in combination with taking his uh, crash course in Arabic, that this might actually help. Uh, the doses are relatively low. He takes the amphetamines. He learns Arabic. We're not sure if the medicine helped, but he feels as though it has. Uh, and he's now excited about this. He leaves for uh, Saudi Arabia. I give him, him an Ambien to take so that he can sleep through the plane, uh, a medicine called modafinil that gets him alert as soon as he gets off of it. He speaks in Arabic, he wins the contract, comes back, is absolutely delighted. OK, so that's the scenario, a hypothetical scenario, mind you, uh, but one that is not so implausible. And the question I would ask you as you're listening to this is, what was your reaction to it? Did you think, this is great, uh, how do I sign up for your clinic? <laughs> or were there points at which you felt uncomfortable? And what I'd like to suggest is there are several reasons why one might feel uncomfortable. First is an issue of safety. How safe are these drugs? What kind of side effects do they have? How safe are they for chronic long-term use? That's an issue. A second issue is one of distributive justice. Clearly, these medications are available to those that can afford them. How do we deal with this idea, which turns out is rampant in our society if you just think of the kinds of education, nutrition, shelter, safety that people have. But this would add yet another piece to the kind of inequities that uh, exist in our society in which we uh, at least hope things are reasonably fair. 
A third question that is somewhat difficult to deal with is an issue of character. We have these general ideas in our culture that uh, no pain, no gain, that struggle builds character, that things should be fair in competition. Uh, and the question is if people are using various kinds of medications to manipulate their mood, to improve their cognition, is, does this somehow rob us of, one, of something that is absolutely critical to the development uh, of character? Um, and the fourth issue uh, is one of coercion. If it turned out that uh, these drugs and, or drugs like these actually help people's cognition, could it be expected of them? Could your boss, for example, demand that you take these medications because, after all, we want our workers to be most productive? Ultimately, I think this uh, kind of use of medications, uh, and I coined the term cosmetic neurology for this, is inevitable. The challenge before us, I think, is how do we manage the onslaught of this kind of use of medications in a way that does the least damage to ourselves individually and to ourselves communally.